Kick and chase by Mullins. Kick and chase again by Mullins. This will be a miracle. Oh, it is a miracle. Fafina tries to crash his way over. He does. Fafina got the ball over the line. Hunter's kick is over the sideline for a 40 20. Yeah, g'day, champions, and welcome to 40 20 Sports. Round seven teams are in. Got a massive week this week. I think there's a cheapy overload. We've got cash to burn, cash to make. Going to have a little look at when it's time to start making points. I, I think this week will still be a good cash gen week. I think there's some people in there that are going to make some ridiculous money, so you cannot ignore that. Probably too early to just throw the cash generation out the window. We still need that. But there's a massive year coming up. We're still only round seven. There's 20 rounds to go. So still got to think about cash gen. Still got to do it especially when there's these buyers that are coming in this week that are just going to absolutely explode with money. And they're, some of them are season hold keepers as well, I believe. So anyway, uh, congratulations to Grant, coach of Katie's Panthers, scored a massive 1,414, top of the 2020 league. Congratulations to you, mate. Well done. Best of the best. Top of the 4020 Cup still with 6,827, 29th overall. Go on, big fella. You're doing so good. Hope you got a heap of trades up your sleeves. The Ferrets, we got 1,191 this week. A bit of a weird one. We jumped up 1,000 spots into 8,600th overall. Dropped down about 20 spots in the 4020 Cup. So I think that just shows how, how competitive the competition is at the moment within the 4020 Cup. So well done to everyone who's jumping onto that. Um, we've got over 600 in that now. So that is massive. Um, we do have the lead code. I'll pop that down there. Um, 726-638, I think. The, the closeout is round eight. I probably think that'll be the start of lockout round eight will be the last time you can jump onto that. So like I said, after round eight, we'll start looking at doing a few giveaways, a few few merch pack sort of stuff. I've got shirts and all that sort of stuff. I know I've been harping on about that, but it'd um, be nice to build a little community. Go around to our Instagram, follow us on there. Had um, Callum, he won a couple of weeks ago. He started to follow us, so shout out to you, mate. We've, um, we love the feedback. Love talking to everyone on Instagram, getting all your getting all your opinions and trying to help you out with your super coach stuff. So I just like talking about it. So with that, we will run through the teams anyway. The first game, Thursday night. Unfortunately, I'll be working, so I'm going to miss this, but it's set to be an absolute cracker. Roosters up against the Storm. Roosters are 1-7, to same as last week, I believe. Connor Watson gets the 5-8 roll. Not sure what's happening with Sam Walker there. He's probably right to come back after that head knock, but he seems to still have a week off. Michael Jennings in the centres, but he's not too much of a drama. We're not worrying about him too much. Joey Manu. If you got on him last week, fucking well done. Um, I did say I was a bit nervous about him because of the fact that he's going to run back into the centres. So, look, a, a break-even of eight. He's 760K. Last week, he made $62,000 for you. So, if you jumped on, last week was the go. Um, I think their run's a little bit tough coming in to the next couple of weeks. Especially coming into the origin period, they do have Melbourne this week, St. George next week, Broncos, New Zealand, Sharks. I'm going to start to look at Joey Manu. I said this last week around round 12, I think. I think um, there's a lot of talk about Tedesco probably not playing origin as well. Ivan Cleary is coming out promoting Dylan Edwards. And look, if Dylan Edwards gets picked for New South Wales, I, I couldn't fault that at all. So... Maybe Joey Manu is not the slam dunk. If you, if you got on him last week, well done. He's an out-and-out out superstar at centre regardless. But don't start thinking about paying up, you know, 760K for a centre, for a centre basically, sorry, for a centre, yeah. I, I'm just not sure about his next couple of weeks coming up. I, I think, like, awesome scores there. He's, he's back-to-back 100s when he's been playing fullback. The dogs, he played fullback when Teddy went out in the nice, he got 100, but... Um, before that, Manly 22, Souths 84, Penrith 63, which is, look, it's it's phenomenal stuff, but I'm not sure if he's worth that money. I'm, I'm going to start to look away from him, I think, and go for a guy who's goal-kicking. Will probably be a buy-in for the hammer, who a lot of people will be jumping off. Front row, we've got Jared Ware Hargraves and Lindsay Collins, Brandon Smith, Nat Butcher, Angus Crichton. Now, look, I'm not really sure how this rotation works with their second row forwards, but Gus did get 80 which is very promising to see. He's going to make a shitload of cash. He'll be, I think he's the second most traded in so far this week. 459K, break even of minus 22. Cannot fold it. I'll, I'll be looking at getting him in straight away. If Gus gets um, 80 minutes there in the back row at the Roosters, he's a season-long keeper. The 
only ever downfall with him was the fact that he would play Origin. He's got a massive base, massive motor on him. 83 and 79 when he's played 80 minutes. He did get a try assist taken off him by Terrell May, which I thought was fair. But yeah, he, he looks for a massive price rise. He looks like he's, he, I, I doubt he's in the conversation for Origin. They play round 13. He's only, still only in 6% of teams. That'll, that'll skyrocket. So I think he's a fantastic buy. Projected score of 41. He will fucking shit that in. If he gets 41, he's going to go up 52K. So, you know, the next couple of weeks, he's in for a big price rise. He's probably a set and forget in your second row if he's playing 80. I love the, I love the buy for him. Other than that, Angus Crichton, yeah. Victor Radley at lock playing 80 minutes. We sort of said um, a couple of weeks, he, he'd be a bit of a pod play. He's Cam Murray, but with a bit of up, upside. Looks to be a good purchase if you jumped on him. No chance of playing Origin. Good buy. Zach Docker Clay. Uh, Egan Butcher is the one that comes on there for uh, the second row. He's probably the one that I'm worried about. Look, I wouldn't be surprised if Angus Crichton does get some time on the bench. But the fact that he's minus 22 break even and he's got a massive output at the moment, old Gus is back. I'd still take him with 60 minutes. I'll have it. For the Storm, back seven, the same as last week. Cam Munster exploded last week. Um, I know a lot of people will be looking to fill their 5-8 spot. I cannot fault going Cam Munster. He does seem to have a little niggling injury still with that groin, but still, I, I think, a fantastic buy. Pappenhausen, he's been good for owners, 75 last week, and he got a sim bin, so that could have been anything. That could have been, you know, 80, 90s, easy. The big one for Melbourne Storm is Nelson Asafa solomona and I don't even mean that for Nelson. Harry Grant owners, this is, I myself am a Harry Grant owner, been waiting for this. He works so well with Nelson. Nelson's such a big body. I don't know if he's on the nose there at Melbourne. He's spent a bit of time in Queensland Cup. But huge news for Harry Grant owners more than Nelson. People that are looking to go to Nelson, Sofa Solomona. I highly doubt he starts. Belly Ake seems to have a thing where he, he names a, a prop at front row to start and then they come off the bench. But either way, for Harry Grant, that's massive news. Josh King, Sean Bloor. Get, he looks to have the... I'm not sure if he's got 80 minutes. I think Belly Ake said he came out and said, look, we weren't really expecting him to play 80 minutes, but he just looked too good out there. So... Sean Bloor, he'll, he'll be on everyone's radar, radar Sorry, radar this week. If not this week, I mean, you still get a bit of a look next week, but if you were looking to go a bit of a different aspect than Angus Crichton, I don't mind the Sean Bloor go, but still, Crichton is, is probably the number one pick for me. On the bench, we've got Joey Chan. Thank goodness we've got Joey Chan. 234K, he's got a negative 10 break even, so all we need to do is get him to step a foot on the line for the weekend, and we've made some cash. Not really sure how that's all going to play out with him coming on. Um, I think in the trials, he did get a bit of a run, look like in the middle, so potentially he only comes on and plays half an hour, but look, we'll, we'll take that. If he comes in the middle, maybe he's up, he gets an uptick in work rate, so we'll be, we'll be looking for that. The next game there, we have got the first of the Friday games. We've got the Dragons up against the Warriors. Huge news for the Warriors today has come out. James Fisher-Harris signed next year for four years. That is massive. Thought Adam Fenua Blake was going to leave a massive hole, but looks to be that they've signed someone better. I don't know how they upgraded, but they've done it. So well done. Warriors fans, you should be absolutely chuffed with that, I'm sure. For the Dragons, um, Lomax goes into the centres. Now, whether his work rate goes down... I'm unsure. I'm sure it's it's only for one game. Jack Bird's out with a HIA, so Zachy Lomax. I, I was I was a bee's dick away from bringing him in. I think this week it's probably going to scare me off a little bit with him having the Warriors. The Warriors are a very good football team. They played a little bit poor on the weekend, getting the draw against Manly. Their completion rate was down, so they'll be looking for a bounce back. He's 755k. He's already made people 125K, so I, I, if you jumped on, well done. I'm probably not looking at him at centre. I'm probably going to give him a miss this week. The concerning thing for me is his run coming up. He's got the Warriors, Roosters, Sharks, Bunnies. Bulldogs, then Penrith. Penrith are around 13, but they're, they're always good defensively. My biggest worry is that this week, the Waz, they're really good defensively, and he won't be the 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 points he's getting are from kicks. You know, the the try assist he got off the kick. He's just a, such an a ter an aerial attacking weapon. 
I, I just think I'm going to hold off this week. I think there'll be more time to pick him up. I'm hoping the next couple of weeks he has that hard run. Coming into origin, there's every chance with his work rate and his aerial prowess that he's a chance. He's a sniff at origin. 100% he's a sniff at origin. Something that New South Wales have really been lacking throughout the years is a big aerial guy. I know Tupu's been there a bit, but still, I, I think Zach Lomax in the air could, could be phenomenal for the Blues. Not saying he will make it, but I, I'm probably going to leave him until around that origin period to see what happens. Flanagan and Hunt in the halves, in the forwards, Molo, Little, Harm, Sele, Raymond, Fatal, and Mariner. Finally, they just put him in the starting squad. He's been named on the bench, and they start him every fucking week, so well done. Tom Eisenhuth, if you jumped on him when he was only 300k, well done. He's made you over 100,000k. Good stuff. Good buying. Marshke, Laurie, DeBellin, and Berno, Ben Murdoch, Masilla. For the Warriors, Chance Nickel Klockstad could not fault a Chance Nickel Klockstad. He's been phenomenal, an 89 and a 90 something in his first two games coming in. So, I, I, people messaged me asking, should we go Chance? And look, I, I sort of steered away from it a little bit, but he's he's every bit up there. I think if he, if he can continue those those meters and that work rate, he's attacking upside out of the right hand side of the field with this man DWZ. We'll talk about him next. It's, it's really promising for the Warriors, and he looks to have a massive work rate. I, I think the best thing for um, the Warriors was having the guys like Roger Tuovasa Sheck there and just to instill a little bit of competition in the Warriors. He, he's, he's, he's got the competition there now, and I, I think he's, he's relishing it. He's going to another level. So he's doing really well, old chance. Um, DWZ, he is a player of interest, 713K. Down 11K, that means absolutely nothing. Break even of 84. He had a whale of a game on the weekend. Intercept. Ended up with a 91, so that's very promising to see. The thing I am interested about DWZ is their run, and all the Warriors players for that. The Sean Johnson's chance. Dragons, Titans at home, Newey, Sydney, Roosters round 10, which is a bit of a bummer, into Penrith. That'll be a bit of a tricky period there, but... Then they've got the Dolphins. Look, it's a there's two top four teams in there, and the rest are potentially bottom four teams for the next six games. So, oh, look, it, 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 I can't turn you off it. DWZ, he would be a pod massively. I think he, the way they work down that right hand side with Chance Nickel Clockstad sweeping over Sean Johnson is phenomenal. He'll, he'll score tries, 100% he'll score tries over the next couple of weeks. He was a leading try scorer last week in the NRL, last week, last year in the NRL. 3% ownership, massive pod play. I, I'm i not going to do it, but if people want to jump on and go that play, I love it. Tamare Martin's another one at the six. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about Tamare Martin, to be honest. He's had two cracking games. He's had tackle bus coming out of everywhere. I'm not really sure that's sort of his play. But again, next couple of weeks, very easy run. He's only 363K, break even of 59. If he gets 50 points, Oh, 56, he's going to make 100K, so that's massive for owners if he's going that way. I just feel like I don't, excuse me, I don't want to go to Tamara Martin and then try and find some more cash to go to a guy like Dill Brown or Munster or whoever the 5'8 thing would be. I've also got Luke Brooks, so I think he's holding his own in 5'8, so I'm, I'm pretty happy to keep him there. But look, I can fully understand it if you want to go to Tamara Martin. Sean Johnson with the news that Nathan Cleary is out for another week. If you jumped on him, love it. Absolutely love it. Fanil Blake, Egan Barnett, Ford, Capewell Harris there. Chanel Harris, Tavita, oh, look, uh, Jacob Laban, decent cheapy, bottom dollar, but he sort of doesn't have the uptick. All the minutes that we're sort of looking for with these guys that are in this, in this sort of cheapy range that we want to go for. Next game, Friday night, 8 o'clock, Parramatta versus the Dolphins. I reckon the Dolphins are up for it here. I reckon they you know, lost the hammer. That'll be huge for them. They've got Trey Fuller coming in, who's a really exciting young prospect, but I'm jumping off the Dolphins. I, I think their run is going to come to a screaming halt. Not that I want it to. I love the Dolphins. I love the fact that they're relishing up there in the second team at Brisbane, but yeah, just with their X-Factor man gone, I think they're in for a tough couple of weeks. Their run isn't overly helpful to them either, so we'll talk about that in a second. Back seven, pretty much the same as last week. Um, Gutho owners still kicking goals. Oh, can't fold him. He's, he's Mr. Durable, so I love it. 
Dill Brown got opened up a fair bit with having Dejan Arcee in there. Um, Blaze Talagi is named on the bench. We'll get to him in a second, but I think it's really opened Dill Brown's game up. I think it's going to continue to open Dill Brown's game up. Look, he he's he's a superstar, Dill Brown. Don't ever forget that. If you're looking at a player, I know everyone is looking. We need the pods. We need the pods, sort of thing. If you're looking to go on to Dill Bags, he does have a fucking hard run the next couple of weeks. He's got the Dolphins, Manly, Broncos, Melbourne, Rabbits, Sharks. Over the origin period, though, is when I'll be looking at deal bags. I'm hoping he stays down a little bit in price, and we can jump on. Sean Lane, one of the most solid players this week as well. Yeah, look, jump off. Sean Lane to Angus Crichton, fantastic swap there. Bryce Cutright, Jermaine Hopgood, he continues to punch out awesome numbers. Hopgood, um, probably not a guy I'm looking to buy. Could very well get a Queensland jersey this year, but look, if you started with him, well done. Blaze Talagi on the bench. Now, he's 271K. He's made a 70K. Um, look, his break even's only six. I, I'm going to hold on to him, but there's every chance that Brad Arthur comes out and fucking assholes us and gives him ten minutes, and he comes on and scores a six or less. You know, I, I look if he gets fifteen points and he gets fifteen minutes, I'll be I'll be happy to get rid of him next week. I think um, I'll take the seventy k and run and try and find another guy that can fill that void. But yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm nervous for that one. If you were looking to sell Blaze Talagi, I'd be all for it. I know him getting named on the bench is awesome, but Brad Arthur's every chance of just coming out and giving him 10 minutes or, or not even playing him. So every bit of an option. Trey Fuller, he is the fullback for the Dolphins. Asako Avarilu, Tessie New, and Jack Bostock. Now, Jack Bostock is one of the most sold players this week as well. Can I get around it? Yeah, I think I can. I think um, with the hammer out, I could probably see an option that I could move Jack Bostock. Moving Jack Bostock, there were Kale Iro, fantastic, clears up a lot of cash. He's made $200,000. His break even is now 54. He was doing pretty poor on the weekend, actually. He was only about mid 20 until he scored his try, and that bumped his price up, uh, bumped his score up to about 53, which was good. I did start him, so I was, I was pretty nervous watching that game, but. The run's still not too bad coming up. I thought it was a bit harder than what it is. Para, Newcastle, Cowboys, Manly, Tigers leading into the uh, the buy period there. So look, their draw is pretty easy. Well, it's not easy, but it's not as hard as what I thought it was. But look, I, I still would like to see the hammer at the fullback. I, I think they may struggle. Their, their spine now is Trey Fuller, Cody Nicarima, and Isaiah Katoa. It doesn't ooze. NRL superstardom. Um, Hamaso going down. He's he, shocking, you know, only four points. He's down to 690K. I'm, I'm looking to move him to a guy who's who's a goal kicker. I, I watched him on the weekend for the first opening minute, and the, the last couple of weeks that I have watched him, I bought him in for that massive score that he's got against the Titans, but other than that, he's pretty quiet. He's I, I kind of like to go guys that have a lot of output anyway um, in base. Doesn't have that, but he is a superstar, massive attacking weapon. But yeah, I'm I'm looking at moving him onto a guy that I know is going to have a bit of work rate. Uh, the forwards, Bromwich, Nichols, Marshall King, Kenny Bromwich, you and I can Max Plath comes in. Look, if you've got Max Plath, I, I know he was only a only a shout in the five eight, but you can move him up the second row. Bring a Dill Brown in, bring a Jeremy Marshall, sorry, Jeremy Marshall King, Tamara Martin in. If that's the way you're going to look at it, that's that's awesome. Sean O'Sullivan comes on to the bench. So I'm a bit nervous about the halves there. I think Sean O'Sullivan, if Bennett's bringing Sean O'Sullivan back in on the bench, he is more than likely bringing him in for a bit of a foot up the arse for the halves to say, listen, I, actually, to be honest, Trey Fuller, that could be a bit of a, a bit of a daunting prospect if he gets has a shocker, they swap him out, move Nick Arima to fullback, and then O'Sullivan comes in. But yeah, other than that, not much else going on there. Panthers up against the Tigers, huge news. Nathan Cleary out for another week. The longer he stays out, the more I am convinced I'm probably not going to bring him back in. If he comes in round eight, you've got eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, five games. With a hamstring injury, he's probably going to be on ice a little bit. Although it is Nathan Cleary, he's a freak. So he could come back and get 100 and I'll be in tears. Anyway, 
Panthers, Edwards. Dylan Edwards has been massive at fullback. I think he's the second highest scoring fullback. Fuck, he's killing it, eh? I, I 100% can see a world where he gets the New South Wales jersey, Dill Edwards. Um, we got Taruva, Targo, Taylor May. Everyone's jumping off Taylor May. There was a bit of rumours. I'll tell you what, there's been a bit of rumours about a couple of players going around. I Look, unless you hear it on game day on the NRL.com app or something, just fucking don't freak out. That, that is the best bet. Watch your late mails. There was a bit of shit about Ethan Strange last week. Everyone freaked out, got rid of him. Until I see something from the NRL.com or a very, very reliable source, I'm probably not jumping onto it. There's a couple of guys that are, are, are really quick on Instagram to just get the get it out, get it out, get it out, get it out. Oh, I heard heard whispers. I'll chuck it out. And the guy I versed last week, he still he still toppled me, which I was spewing about. But um, yeah, he ended up flicking. Flicking bloody the Raiders fucking five eight. So like just calm down. There was a lot of talk about Taylor May being out with this speeding thing. You know, not a good look. He's a bit of a dodo, but um yeah, just just take five on that. Unless you hear it from the NRL.com in the late mails and whatnot, that's the best way to do it. Look at your late mail, hour out, run with there. I'm keeping Taylor May, I think fantastic. He's going to play round 13. I, he's got a huge work rate. He's going to come back. He's going to come back into the money. He's 430K. I don't know if there's a guy in the centres around that 430K that you can probably bring in that has the work rate and the potential to get some decent points. All they've got to do is start working that left edge. I'm sure points will come. Jerome Luai, Brad Schneider, Moses Leota, Mitch Kenny, James Fisher-Harris, like I said before. Fish, going back home to New Zealand. New Zealand's such a draw card now for these New Zealand players, New Zealand-born players going home. that the, the crowd's right behind them. They've got the, the whole country's behind them, so it's good to see. Scotty Sorensen, Liam Martin, Isaiah Yeo, um, Garner Henry-Smith, and Dane Laurie on the bench. For the Tigers, they are pretty much the same, except Lachlan Galvin comes back into the throw. Look, Galvin's been awesome to start the year, but I'm probably not looking at playing him this week. Set for a massive price rise, um, look, if you were going to jump on him, I, I still think there's enough time to jump on him. He's got a massive negative break even. Still very cheap. He's only about 300K. Yeah, I, I can't fold it if you wanted to jump on him. Stefano Utsukamanu, we told you a week or two ago that if you're going to jump on him, jump on him now. He is probably a little bit out of reach for my liking. Look, a, a phenomenal. I, I, I probably thought he was going to kick a bit more than he, what he did. He... Um, Scored that awesome try, shook the fucking Seco's, Seco's hand and that. So that was really funny. But um, 590K now, he's starting to get up a little bit. He made 35K last week. His break even is 24. He should shit that in. But yeah, I think last week was probably the last week to get on him. Um, 590K is just a bit much for me to be spending. Although if you did have a Reuben Cotter and you were looking to get rid of Reuben Cotter, I'm going to start to think about moving Reuben Cotter on the next couple of weeks. So... If you went from him to Utakamanu, I can understand that. Korosau, again, 60-odd. He was a bit average, but rugby league-wise, a couple of passes were going to ground from him. But anyway, he's still outscoring Harry Grant, so that's the only reason people brought him in was to do a job, if not better, than Appy, uh, than Harry Grant. So well done to you guys. Clement Papalidi, Bateman, Bolet, uh, Latu Fainu, Twal, Safaf, and Samuela Fainu round out the bench there. Gold Coast Manly, Philip Sami goes to fullback. I brought David Fafida in early last week thinking, fuck yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll beat the jump. Everyone was going to Alessia Katoa, and um, I, th- I thought I'll, I thought I'll beat the jump, you beauty. It ended up being a bit of a master stroke. I fluked it. Uh, Cam Murray only got 30-odd, 35, I think it was, in the HIA. So Dave Fafida ended up with a 71, even coming off the bench. He just looks like every game he's going to score a point per minute, basically. He played 70 minutes with the golden point extra time. Bit nervous being on 55 at the end there, but he ended up updating to 71. So again, 71, and he didn't he didn't do anything extravagant, didn't really have too many attacking stats. It was just tackle busts and offloads and a massive work rate. So I'm I'm super happy about that. Fingers crossed he can start and get 80 and I can lock in 70 to 80 points every week plus attacking upside. But anyway, Philip Sami at fullback there, which means AJ Brimson and Kieran Foran is in the halves. The only disappointing thing about that is Kieran Foran was on the right-hand side. AJ Brimson seems to be on the left. 
But still, AJ Brimson giving the ball to Dave Fafita is pretty good. Bo Fermor has been good. Um, a lot of people jumped off him at the start of the year, but I think he pumped out a 70 as well. So real good for people who held on to him. Harley Smith Shields is an option for a cheapie if you already started with Kaliro. He got 60 on the weekend. He sets for a good price rise. Yeah, look, I I, I sort of said about Khalees Haas, but I think I'm going off it a little bit. Um, Titans, don't trust the Titans. I just want to have Fafita there. AJ Brimson is an interesting one. He's about 500-something K now in the CTWs. If he plays in the halves, I, I was really going to look at him if he went to fullback. I think it's mad that he's not at fullback. But anyway, Desi might know a bit more than me about football. Sam Verrills, Clark, Liu, and Pahulu is on the bench for Manly. Got a fair bit to talk about on this one. Tommy Trebojevic, Ruben Garrick comes back in. He is the guy that I'm probably looking at buying, to be honest. Like I said, there's there's a certain point where we've got to start thinking about cash gen and start thinking about points. I think Garrick is probably... For his price, 696K, you get a discount on him at the start of the year of 25K. Break even's 141. I'm fully aware of that. But I can't not. I can't not go in. His scores are phenomenal. His scores over the last couple of weeks 99, 54, 92, 71. Only got one against Penrith, but that has bumped his price down a fair bit. And obviously, his break even's flown. Their run coming up looks really good for Manly. I'm going to be running three Manly players now with Brooks, Tommy, and Garrick. Their, their attacking upside is just, I, you can't ignore it. And Brooksy, I've got him there. If he gets what he did last week, 49, I'm happy with that. Titans, Parrot at home, Canberra at home, Dolphins are their next four games. I think there's going to be some massive scores coming out of Tommy. I think Ruben Garrick will score 20 to 30 points a game in goal kicking alone, so I've got to have a bit of that. Yeah, he's he's 50 he's 50 to 60k cheaper than some of the other blokes that I'm looking at with um, your Lomaxes and your Manus, and he kicks goals. So easy run coming up. He's probably the guy I'm going to be looking at to trade out for Hammer. Good work rate. Yeah, look, I love it. I can't fold it. Um, he's not he's not too high on the traded in list. I'll tell you that much. Look, this is. A thing where the break even just scares people away, and it, it look break evens mean fuck all to me when we're chasing points. So I'm happy to run with that. In the six is Brooksy, Cherry Evans is seven. Paseka Lodge comes back in. Matty Lodge, I haven't had too much of a look at him, but he is coming back from an ACL, so I can't see massive minutes coming in for him. Josh Alloa is out as well for a week, so one to look at, but I wouldn't be jumping on too early. Ola Kawadu, Corey Waddell in the twelve. Uh, now that. Burbo is gone. He could be an option, but again, there's just there's so much better options there in the two RF spot, like your Gusses, you know, even Sean Bloor now. I don't really know a world where I would be looking at Waddell. Um, he's also pretty expensive, 454k. He's got a break even of one, which is really good. So he could be set to make some money, but again, if his projected score is 44 to make 30k. I, th- I think if he ki- if he kills it, you can still jump on him next week. Got 67 last week. Yeah, last two scores, actually, where he's got minutes. Penrith, he got 71, and New Zealand, 67. That might be something we need to look at next week. But anyway, I, th- I think next week I'll start be looking at um, buy planning a little bit more with round 13 and that coming in, so we'll we'll run with that. Lawton, Bullimore, Aaron Woods, and Nathan Brown round up the bench. <clears throat> Broncos up against the Raiders. That is up there at Suncorp for the Broncos. Reese Walsh. Look, Reese Walsh is going to be at a fair discount in another couple of weeks, and they have a really good run. I just, yeah, I'm, I think now is the time. If you're struggling and you're behind in the overalls and in your um, head-to-head leagues, now is the time to start thinking about the origin period. So I'm going to start jumping off origin players the next two or three weeks. Start looking for points and players that aren't playing Origin. But anyway, Walsh, he, he's a freak. He's goal kicking with um, the halfback gone there. So look, I, I, I can't fault Reese Walsh. I think some big scores are coming in for him. But Oates on the wing, Stags, Cobbo, Jesse Arthurs, Ezra Mam, and Jock Madden in the halves. They, they're they pretty much how they were last week. Um, Jaden Hunt, I wouldn't be buying into Jaden Hunt. Um, 
just doesn't seem to have the output or the attacking upside that we're looking at. Uh, Piakura, I, we've been saying this for a couple of weeks now, he is set to come back, but he's not named on the extended bench even, so not sure what is going on with him. Xavier Willison, if you're looking to jump off Viliami for feeder, if you have him in your front row or you've got a disaster in your front row, Xavier Willison cannot fold it. Set to make a stack of cash. Canberra, Chevy Stewart gets the fullback. Guernsey there continues that, so that's really good to see. James Schiller continues on the wing. I am all but convinced that James Schiller is got the chockies over Albert Hoppawade now. He's just been a, a try-scoring machine. Two tries last week. Just absolutely killing it. Look, he's nearly he's 394K. Last week, he made 155K. His break-even is still minus 60. So that is fucking unheard of. If he gets another 60, he's going to make 100K again. 250K in two weeks. He's going to go bananas. Even if he has a bad game, he's still probably going to make 50, 60K. So if you jumped on Schiller, a bit of risk and reward there because there was a bit of news that Albert Hoppawade was right to come back. But yeah, look, some, some awesome scores. I... I'm a bit worried about their run the next three games. Broncos, Sharks, Manly, Manly at four points as well. I'm probably not going to play Schiller this week. He'll probably score three tries and get 100, knowing my luck this year. But anyway, I think Broncos up at Suncorp. I'm probably going to – I'm trying my best to leave Canberra Raiders players out there. They had an awesome opportunity against the Titans. They they had repeat set after repeat set. There's a, there's a bit going on there with Sticky. And um, – Desi Hasler there, but look, I, I just thought the main thing I took out of that game was that their attack was still quite clunky. A bit of individual individual brilliance in Golden Point by Ethan Strange and Jamal Fogarty got him home, but yeah, I'm still a little bit nervous about the Canberra attacking upside there. Um, Xavier Savage, he's been pretty good the last couple of weeks. Ethan Strange in the six, um, I, I'm looking like he is going to have to be my 5'8 this week. I'm super nervous about it, especially coming up against Brisbane. It's either Ethan Strange or Lachlan Galvin for me is what I'm running. I am super happy with my side apart from that. But next week, we will be moving Ethan Strange out of 5'8 back down into our CTWs, and I'll be moving Brooksy back down there. So hopefully we can get rid of him. Danny Levi, if you have an opportunity and your team allows you to get off with this guy, I've been saying this for the last couple of weeks, eventually the tries are going to stop and the 20-point games are going to come in. I, I, don't, I don't understand how this man can do an output in a middle, getting 60-odd minutes of what he can do. Like, it's fucking ridiculous. 18 points on the weekend. Fuck, break even at 54. He's made 134K. He still made 15K. If he scores a 40, which unless he scores a try, he's not going to do... He's going to lose 12K. So going to have to start looking at that for Danny Levi owners. 373K. You could switch him off to a Braley if you needed to. Braley got mid-40s, so he's on the up and upper. I am going to be looking at getting off Danny Levi very, very soon. Tarpanay, Hudson Young. Adam Ariotta comes in at the 12. The good one here is Morgan Smithies. Now, Morgan Smithies, if you sold him, at the time, I could probably understand it, but I did have bigger issues in my team than Morgan Smithies, so I ended up keeping him in my side. He is now 465K, break even of just six. He's going to kick again. He's The best thing for him is having Corey Horsburgh out. His, his points the last two games have been the best they have, 69 and 68. His workload is just in, immense. Like, Granted, he got the 90 minutes last week, which bumps his score up, but still a 69 and 68. Fucking awesome. I'll take that every day of the week. Um, look, I wouldn't be buying him, but if you if you kept him and you didn't have that opportunity to sell him, 35% of ownership still. So there are still a lot of teams that do not have this bloke in their side. He's going to be a perfect one to hold to the origin period, I believe, and then hopefully flick on out later in the year. Starling, Sasagi, Trey Mooney, and Pasami Solo round out that team there. The Sunday games... The doggies up against the Mighty Knights. We have got Connor Tracy goes into fullback. Owners will be loving to see this. Jacob Carraz named on the wing. Bronson Jerry in at the centers. Stephen Crichton at O'Carr. I, I think the young winger there, Wilson, sorry, sort of threw all that a little bit out because he had such a good start of the year. But look, I am, I'm probably not going to go Bronson this week. He could potentially be 
a guy that we look at for next week, I think. Um, break even of minus 12. If he scores 40, he's going to go up 50-odd K nearly. So 345K. He's just a little bit awkwardly priced when you've got Kyle Iroh there and Angus Crichton that's only 100K more and is set for a monster. A 31 and an 87 against Melbourne. Fuck, he gave... Nick Meany, an absolute bath. He is a fucking beast as well. The next rounds he's got coming up, he's got Newcastle and the Tigers. If you wanted to get on that, I cannot fault it. Plays round 13. Oh, yeah, look, after he does have a bye round eight, which is a little bit concerning. So you do have a couple of weeks to, to get to get onto him. But potentially, he could have a run of Tigers, Penrith, Canberra, St. George, Newcastle, Parramatta. That's into the buy periods as well. So, look, I can't fault that. Newcastle round 13 without Ponga. That could be an absolute bloodbath as well. Good buy. Look, the, the more I look at it, 345K, you probably can't go wrong. I He, he is the fourth most brought in. 4,600 teams are bringing him in. If you've already got Kaylee Rowe, if you bought him last week or you started with him, Bronson Jerry, I'd, I'd jump on it. I think the run's good. If you can afford to have him this week and then sit him out for next week, do it. If not, he'll be a serious watch for round nine. Burton Hutchison somehow is still fucking halfback, you poor doggies fans. As a Newcastle Knights fan, I am stoked to see him in there. I cannot believe that Toby Sexton is not named in that. Toby Sexton's been killing it in reserve grade. His defense has been awesome. I think Drew Hutchison had something like nearly 12 or 13 missed tackles last game. I, I saw that somewhere. I don't know if that's right or not. Don't quote me. But, yeah, fuck, he's got to go. Um, Sam Hughes named it prop. We'll see. Reed Marnie, Chris Patolo. Kick out. He's been phenomenal. He, he again, Nick Meany, he had fucking nightmares on the weekend, I tell you. Jamin Salmon in the second row and Josh Curran named it lock. Massive. If he gets named at lock every single week, that is sort of what we were hoping to get out of him. He's got the duel now. I'm probably going to move him up into my front row forward this week, and we'll see how that goes. Bailey Howard, he was decent on debut. He was busy, tackled well. Uh, Farmer Silly, Morin, and Blake Taff is in the 17. That is huge news. Connor Tracy, he'll be one to watch over the next couple of weeks. We'll see how he goes at fullback. Kalen Ponga, fullback for the Knights. He's been named, um, fucking hell, scored a 91, didn't kick goals, had a hip pointer injury. Didn't play for 20 minutes of the back end of the first half there. So he was fucking phenomenal. 91, brought him in last week. So that was a good option. Um, Greg Marzu. Now, Greggy Marzu, he is going to lose a stack of cash over the next couple of weeks. The thing that I'm worried about Greg Marzu is that he was playing on the right-hand side. Now, I don't know if that's a thing that Anari, they're going to be training him over there. But one to keep an eye on. 708k, break even of 131. Hopefully, the next couple of weeks he does sit over there on that right hand edge. I've got a feeling that it's something to do with his broken hand. Now, he's probably come back a bit early. He was heavily bandaged with that hand. I think that is more of a thing that it, it probably a little bit easier for him to catch the ball with the broken hand that he's on the right hand side. All preseason, Greg Marzu was on the left and Ari Tuala on the right. I, the, the only thing that I could think of why that would swap that around. Is just to benefit Marzu a little bit. Um, Tommy Jenkins was quite poor. Not didn't do anything wrong. He just wasn't super busy. So I think if his hand heals up nicely and he does get a sniff over back on the left hand side, I'll be I'll be having a serious look at him. Um, Forty points, all in base. He's got no attacking stats this year yet. So they will come. The Knights they'll start clicking. But once he moves over that left hand edge where he belongs outside Ponga and that uh, hand fixes up, I think he'll be a decent buy, especially coming into the buy periods. Hopefully he can lose a heap of cash, get to round 13 with him, and then we can jump on him. Um, Gags, Best, Tuala, Cogger and Hastings in the halves. They look pretty decent, I think. I think um, Hastings being the number seven, Cogger being the six. It, look, I was I was sceptical on there how this whole Jack Cogger thing was going to work, but I think that if he can stay in the halves, I... I hope if they just keep it the way that it's going, then I'll be pretty happy on it. Um, we've got Jaden Braley and Safidi at the front row. Look, I talked about Braley really quickly just before. I think he's not a bad option if you're going to jump on. I think I probably can't do it this week, but next week, if I've got the luxury of going this trade, I'll probably go Danny Levi to Jaden Braley. He's lost 18K getting the minutes. That's the big one we were waiting for. 70 minutes on the weekend with a 42. 
Um, Phoenix Rossum came in. I, I did say this at the start of the year. I saw a world where Phoenix would come in, give Adam Elliott a breather, go into lock, and then give Braley a 10 to 15 minute spell. So if Braley is looking like a 70 minute player, I'm I'm probably more inclined to jump on that. He's still got a decent break even, break even of 16. So he's not going to gain a heap of cash. And next week could be the perfect little thing to go Danny Levi to Jaden Braley. So I, I think I'll be looking at that next week. Just one to keep an eye on. If That'll be a luxury trade. If nothing else has happened, that'll be something I'll be looking at. Dill Lucas stays in the 11. Um, no Frizzell to be spotted there on the extended. So that's good for Dill Lucas. Known as Kai Pierce Paul pumped out nearly 90. Got that attacking stat there. Fucking Butcher shit his gear when he saw him running at him. He is such an attacking weapon. We just haven't seen it yet, but now that the attacking stats are going to start coming, I think I think they're going to really start to use him. I think that um, Hastings out there on the left-hand side is very beneficial to him. They went him a lot because Hastings has half a fucking brain and realised that Ponga was cooked, so he kept going short, kept going short, which was it was bad for Ponga, but it was really good for Kai Pierce Paul. It's good to see. Adam Elliott there, he crossed for a nice little try. Um, anyone who follows us on Instagram saw we turned five bucks into $9,000 this week, and it was all thanks to Adam Elliott getting that last try there. Me and the missus are still doing backflips over it, so jump on there. Um, yeah, that was huge. Crossland, Safidi, Jack Hetherington, and Matt Croker round that out. The last game of the week is Cronulla versus the Cowboys. Kennedy, Sam Stone Street comes on the wing. I know nothing about this bloke. Have heard no mention of him, um, but yeah, fantastic. I'll be watching him on the weekend. Be good to see. Kale Eero, he comes on. I'm nearly convinced now that Kale Eero has won that centre spot. I was very sceptical on about um, Talakai coming back onto that that centre. I think they've got the cavalry back now. Braden hamming Lowelli, Toby Rudolph are back. I, I, look, Kale Eero gives me... Bloody Valentine Holmes vibes all day of the week. Break even of minus 76. If he gets 45 points, he will get 100K in the bag. Decent fucking opposition coming up as well for the Sharkies. They have the Cowboys. Then they have the Raiders down at GIO and then St. George for the Derby. Look, I like it. I like it a lot. The the thing coming up for them is though around 10, 11, and 12, they have Melbourne, Roosters, and Penrith. But anyway... We'll worry about that when it comes. Kyle Hero, number one board in this year, 30,000 this week, sorry. 30,000 teams are bringing him in, so that looks really, really good. Mulatalo, he's been killing it. Got 100 again. Um, his base is up. He is the go-to guy there. Braden Trindle, Nico Hines in the half. Nico Hines, good couple of games. Look, he's doing fuck all, and he's getting 80s and 90s. So he's just not getting the attacking stats with the line break assists and the try assist yet. He got a good little try assist right at the death to punch his numbers up. But again, he's, his work rate is really, really good. Goal kicking, he's just got it all. So happy with him at my halfback. Tommy Hazelton, Braley, Kafusi, Britton Nakora. That is a guy I'll be looking at getting in in the next couple of weeks. Um, look, if I, can, if I can swindle it, I would like it sooner rather than later with his run coming up. But his output, 60-something, all in base, looks really good. Cam McInnes. As long as Dale Finucan is out, Cam McInnes is a fucking buy. 70-something, all in base, looks massive. The bench, Jackie Williams, Toby Rudolph, Talakai, and Braden Hamlin, Ueli. For the Cowboys, Scotty Drinkwater at the back, he's been killing it. Um, a little bit of a quiet game against the Eels with 60. You know, I, I thought with a try, he probably went a little bit better than that, but 60-something there. Very popular owned, Scotty Drinkwater. Val Holmes, a 73. He looked... I don't, I don't know what was going on with old Val over there, but he looks a little bit disinterested. He, uh, his standards, I think he will say it was a poor game, a couple of mistakes there, but still pumped out 73. He's going to be the number one centre wing. So if you don't have him and you want to jump on him, I don't think it's too late for origin. I like it. Tommy Chester is an interesting one. He's sub 400K. Decent. Scored a nice little try out on the right-hand edge there for the Cowboys. So I'm not I'm not against going Tommy Chester, but probably bigger bigger fish to fry. Sammy Valame is fucking expensive, so don't go there. Tommy Dearden and Chad Townsend, McLean, Tao Malolo, Arisi Robinson, Finifuiaki, Jeremiah Nanai, and Ruben Cotter. Now, Ruben Cotter, if you have a luxury trade to sell Ruben Cotter, I know 50s are fantastic, but 
if you can use that for somewhere else, if you can go Reuben Cotter to Angus Crichton, I even like that if that is if that is something you're interested in. I'm, I'm not disappointed with how Reuben Cotter's gone. I brought him in at front row forward to hopefully get 50 to 60 a game. That's what he's been getting, but zero attacking upside from the big fella, and I'll be looking at moving him on probably as soon as pot, sooner rather than later, I think, get him in for a guy. He, he's a perfect little downgrade to Crichton this week. Although I don't think that's what's going to be happening with my side, but still, that is that is a trade that I could really, really get around. Um, Granville name Sam McIntyre and Jack Gajewski round out the teams there. The yeah, at the end there, not a lot going on for the Cowboys. But yeah, that's that's the run through. Hopefully that gives you a bit of information. Please go and follow us on Instagram. We've got a heap of stuff down there. I'll have a little link down there. Again, that lead code seven two six six three eight. Jump on. Only a couple of weeks to go now until you can you'll be locked out of that. Round eight is the is the finish of that. Please go and follow us on Instagram. We're going to start doing a couple of giveaways with shirts and stickers and stubby coolers, all that good stuff. Building a nice little community there. I'm I'm loving all the the interest and in the the amount of feedback and the amount of um, interest and talk that there is about people asking me about details on teams and stuff. Absolutely loving it. Loving the chat. I'll reply to everyone. I will get on to everyone. There is not a person I'll leave in the lurch. So I'll, I'll do my best to give you the best advice that I think is possible. And yeah, that's about us, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Take care.